Hello guys and welcome to your 34th Java tutorial on polymorphism. Now as you can see I have cleared all the code out of the main method in the main class that we had here previously and I've also cleared out the animal class, the cow class, and the goat class. Although uh, I have not deleted them in my infinite mercy. Alright, so as you can see uh, the animal class is empty, yes, I've... I've I, Alright, I've, I've say it, said that already, and the cow class extends from the animal class, and the goat uh, class also extends from the animal class. Two very important th key and key things that uh, must be present for this tutorial on polymorphism to take place. Now, as I navigate here over to the main method, I'm going to type a line of code and create an animal object with it. And I am going to call uh, your attention to your... <laughs> Uh, yes, your attention to the this following detail. As you can see, by creating this anim instance or this anim instance of the animal class, we always have to specify the animal class in two places. And we've kind of been doing this unconsciously, but now that we think of it, why is this really necessary? Well, it's actually necessary because this first thing, this first thing is actually a, kind of like a data type, kind of like an integer data type. You know, int i is equal to three or something. Uh, well, that is actually the reason we need to put this animal class here that means this anim is of type animal this is what this is where that actually goes down but what does this new animal uh thing here what does that do well as you can see we're actually calling the constructor of the animal class uh, as you can see by these round parentheses and this new keyword once again instantiates a new uh a new animal class that is stored in this anim instance and what this really does is it arms our uh anim instance with all of its variables and methods and uh, yeah, that's really all it does. But listen, listen. If we have two cow classes here, the cow class and the go class, that um, uh, extend the animal class, wouldn't it be true that we could set it equal to a new instance of the cow class? Since uh, all we're really doing is we're arming it uh, with the methods and the variables. And you know, since the cow already uh, already has everything from the animal class, all the cow does is just add some of its own stuff and. Uh, to what already to what it already inherited from the animal class, so is that true? And it is true as a matter of fact, since the cow is a subclass of our animal class, we can actually uh, create an anim object that is has a data type of animal. But since the cow inherits from the animal class, it also ha technically has a data type of animal, and we can easily uh, set it equal to a new cow instance, which already just adds some of its uh, own variables and methods to along with what it inherited from the animal class. So yes, that is in fact true, and that is the key idea to polymorphism. So we're just going to want to copy that uh, line of code, paste it over, and set this, uh, and create a goat, and let's spell it correctly, and set it equal to a new goat, and let's change the name of this uh, animal to a cow. So these are both animals, as we can see by the data type. But this cow is armed with all the stu new stuff ad added in the goat class, added in the cow class, and this goat is armed with all the new stuff added from the goat class. Yes, there we go. All right. So this is good and all, but where does it actually come in useful? Where does polymorphism come in useful? Well, the answer to that question is that polymorphism actually comes in very useful in groupings. So say we could have an animal array here, animal array, uh, and this is yeah, animal array animals. And this animals uh, array is going to be set equal to an empty array for now. Alright, so now that we have an animal array animals, let's go ahead and actually put some stuff in this and put some, you know, objects in this. And since these cow and goat variables are actually of type, of type animal, we can easily put them in here. Cow, comma, goat. And we are getting no errors once again uh, because they are, because the, they have been they have been uh, constructed with with objects that are subclasses of the animal class, so we're getting absolutely no errors. Even though they have their own significant methods and variables, we would they would have if we had already put some stuff in there. Uh, we're getting no errors because they're all they all have common elements and characteristics from the animal class that we have defined by this uh, animal data type, and that that is the way we can actually group significantly different classes. Uh, in one single array. That's that's one very very big function uh, of polymorphism. One very big, um, you know, uh, plus plus yes, I say plus. <laughs> All right, couldn't think of a better word. All right, 
So anyways, now that to actually go on to our next demonstration, we're actually going to have, a cre have to create a method in each of the classes here. Now let's go ahead into the animal class, and this method is going to be a public void uh, display name. Mm. Display your name on this paper with the pen. Alright, so anyways, all this display name method is going to do is it's going to print out the name of our animal. And this animal, really, it's, it's kind of like an anonymous object, so I'm just going to... I'm just gonna say I am anonymous. That's what it's gonna display. Anonymous, what are you doing this Java tutorial? You should be protecting us against SOPA. No. All right. <laughs> Anyways, so now that this method uh, is in the animal class, it is automatically inherited by the cow class. But you know, we don't want it to display the same thing for each of our classes. Let's actually just copy that method over here. Uh, command C uh, and c Command V or Control C. Well, I'm on a Windows computer, so yeah, it would be Control C, Control V. All right. And let's just change this up a bit, and let's change it over to cow. And notice, by the way, that we're since we're using the same method that we've inherited from the animal class, we're actually overriding it uh, by putting the same, you know, same method name with the same modifiers and everything. We're actually overriding it and uh, changing the the code body to something different than we had originally here. That's what we're actually doing. I'm actually gonna have an official tutorial on uh, overriding methods, uh, so uh, don't fret. Uh, about that concept now, and we're also going to do the same thing in the goat class, and we're gonna, yes, we're gonna goat goat dog. Let's go, let's let's change it to goat dog. There we go. That's better. <laughs> change that to display. Uh, yeah, I am a cow. I am a goat dog, and yeah, and not I'm a cow. It's, I'm Bursa. That's what we had in the last tutorial, so we might as well set it to that. All right. Now that we have everything uh, more or less set up, and we have overridden the display name method in the cow and goat. Uh, method and the cow and goat classes to display something different than what they originally inherited from the animal class. Uh, let's go ahead here and let's create a for loop. Now this for loop is just going to loop through all of the animals, all of the animals, and it's going to call their display name method. Now what we would have to do originally is we would have to, you know, go ahead and call go goat dot display name, goat, you know, cow dot display name, and we would have to do that singularly. But since we have a conveniently grouped animal array and we know that all animals have to have this display name method in one way or another either overridden or originally inherited uh, we know that they all have to have that so we can actually just create uh, a special enhanced for loop for our animals and uh, let's just go ahead here and make an animal instance right here animal a and it's going to loop through the animals array and remember guys this is actually a special for loop that uh, is created for arrays Here's our animal a object, and it's just gonna be uh, it's gonna navigate through all of the instances of the animals array, and it's just gonna stop once it reaches the last instance. All right, so each time on this a object, all we want to do is call the display name method, and this display name method is once again going to print out its respective statement, uh, the cow or the goat. All right, so if we actually run this program by hitting the play button uh, and hitting OK, we should see some input. I mean output, and here it is. I am Bessie, I am Goat Dog. The respective display name calls for our two animals in the animal array. So hopefully after this tutorial, uh, you guys can see why polymorphism can be useful uh, for kind of, you know, grouping seemingly different classes uh, by one common characteristic that they both inherit from the animal class. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you guys need to know. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and peace.